Hello everyone and welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Today I'm really excited to talk to you about the Seventh Crusade of the Holy Land because in studying the primary sources, I found some information that adds to the common narrative among Crusade scholars. In the Levant, around the time of the Seventh Crusade, the Khwarazmian clans had been destroyed by the Mongols and were settling further and further west into the area affected by the Crusades between the Christians, Turks, Byzantines, and Ayyubid Muslims. The Ayyubids tied up trying to create fragile diplomacy with other new Muslims between Egypt and Syria invited the Khwarazmians to subdue the region around Jerusalem in 1244 AD. Instead of just subduing it though, they completely destroyed it, leaving it uninhabitable and completely useless to both Christians and Muslims. Louis IX of France was devastated. He began campaigning for another crusade in Europe when he heard the city had fallen. He took his time and calculated the mistakes that had been made in previous crusades, particularly the fifth, since he adopted the view that Egypt was still key to holding Jerusalem for good. There did not seem to be a sense among many Europeans, at least initially, that the new threat in the region would change the balance of power that was already volatile. As had become a crusade staple, Italian shipping transported the French soldiers, food and supplies to Cyprus, the key gain from the Byzantines during the Third Crusade. Louis continued to study diligently how the split of the army had occurred during the Fifth Crusade and where and when they could attack that would give them their best chance for success. He considered the rash decisions forced by the papal legate Pelagius, how King John and the Templars had protected them, moreover really just how lucky they were to have lived in the face of what could have been a massacre at Mansura. By the time Louis IX's planning was done, he was sure that he had an effective plan. In a letter written from Damietta in 1249 AD by Guy, a knight of the household of the Viscount of Melun, to be of Chartres, it was discovered that contrary to the crusade narrative of some, Damietta was not originally the intended destination of King Louis IX and his fleet during the Seventh Crusade. Some modern crusade scholarship has viewed and documented the return to Damietta as inevitable and part of solid planning on the part of the crusaders. However, as the knight Guy reveals, quote, After a council, we departed from Cyprus for the east. The plan was to attack Alexandria, but after a few days a sudden tempest drove us over a wide expanse of the sea. Many of our vessels were driven apart and scattered. The sultans of Cairo and other Saracen princes informed by spies that we intended to attack Alexandria had assembled an infinite multitude of armed men from Cairo, Babylon, Damietta, and Alexandria, and awaited us in order to put us, while exhausted, to the sword. Toward morning the sky cleared, the storm abated, and our scattered vessels came together safely. An experienced pilot who knew all the coast of this part of the sea and many idioms, and who was a faithful guide, was sent to the masthead in order that he might tell us if he saw land and knew where we were. After he had carefully and sorrowfully examined all the surrounding country, he cried out terrified, God help us, God help us, who alone is able? We are before Damietta." End quote. At that moment, realizing that from among the 1,500 ships, others had also realized they were before Damietta, Louis IX animated the men and framed the Crusades' arrival there as divine. They decided at that moment to prepare for naval combat against Damietta. The primary source goes on to explain that the odds in their favor and the little opposition they met when they landed, presumably the bulk of the Muslim forces were in Alexandria waiting for their arrival there, was divine. The popular account picks up with the arrival in Damietta describing a more conventional battle. On June 4th, 1249, Louis IX and his fleet approached Damietta. Al Sali Ayyub, the Sultan of Egypt, positioned troops along the harbor and west of the town in an attempt to prevent the landing of the Crusader ships. 
However, Louis had fitted his galleys for an amphibious assault directly on the beach. The only casualties that Louis took were three or four men who jumped from the ships too soon and drowned attempting to wade to shore, according to the knight. Intimidated, Al Salih's force abandoned the harbor and the town, leaving it to Louis. They overcame the confusion and formed up for a march south to Mansura, where they established a defensive posture. That November, Louis began marching south toward Cairo and setting up supply depots and forts along the way. This would prevent them from being cut off from Damietta, as had happened in the Fifth Crusade. As this occurred, and the Ayyubids prepared for another showdown outside Mansura, Al Salih got sick and died. Quickly, the Sultan's men sent to Syria for Salih's heirs. Meanwhile, Fakhr al-Din took over the operation against Louis and organized the offensive. Al-Din was well aware of Crusader spirit and just how serious of a foe the Crusaders were. He too had remembered the mistakes of the Fifth Crusade, both the Christians and their own. Meanwhile, an Egyptian trader betrayed the position of the Muslim force near Mansura to Louis and his knights. Immediately, he sent Robert I, Count of Artois, to surprise the Ayyubids. In the battle, the Crusaders killed Emir Fakhr al-Din and succeeded in scattering the Muslim forces. As had happened many times before, however, Robert underestimated Muslim force strength and the supposed weakness of his enemy. Without waiting for King Louis IX to join him in the assault, he attacked Mansura himself and was soundly defeated. Muslim reinforcements arrived and decimated Robert's force. There was no way a move on Cairo could be made now. Finally, the Crusaders were slowed down by a combination of disease and the arrival of the large Muslim force arriving from Alexandria. Meanwhile, the new Sultan, Turan Shah, arrived in Egypt, cutting off the chains of supply between the French forces and Damietta. Not only had the Fifth Crusade seemed to repeat itself, but left the army of the Crusaders in a far weaker condition. Turan Shah went on a bloody mission to destroy the French infantry. A massacre ensued, resulting in the King of France and his officers being taken prisoner. The Muslim victory was overwhelming. He had yet to address the administration and politics of cleaning up the victory and collecting ransoms for the high-profile prisoners before his own men, officers of the Mongol and Caucasoid descent called the Mamluks, sought to overthrow him. The knight Guy indicated that it was Faris Adin Akhtai, commander of his father's Bari Mamluks, who had been sent from Egypt to bring him back and pursue the war against Louis IX of France. The Mamluk portion among Turan Shah's officers, seeing an opportunity, overthrew him and ended the Ayyubid rule that had dominated for so long. They then put their own men in positions of power. They did so swiftly by assassinating Turan Shah in the field of battle. Now it would be the Mamluk that negotiated with the French remaining at Damietta for the return of their king and dignitaries. The Mamluks set the ransom exceptionally high. The new rulers would need money to further establish themselves at the top of the Islamic power structure. There was no other choice then for the Crusaders to pay the ransom, and in May 1250, King Louis was released. The remnants of the French force and their king with them left Damietta for good and gathered at one of the few safe places left in Outremer, Acre. The king, perhaps seeing the Mamluk rise to power as a new age in the war with Crusaders, was actually not in a rush to return to France. He and many of his knights settled in Acre, building back up her defenses and political structure. They did the same thing in Tyre, Sidon, Jaffa. Concern over the rise of the Mamluk became great. There was no other conceivable reason for Louis to have spent so much time in the region building up the Crusader defenses. Louis IX established a permanent French garrison, which included more Templars and Hospitallers. The work he did in Accra was well respected and may have added some hope to what was otherwise another devastating crusade for Christians. King Louis' indirect participation in what would lead to the overthrow of the Ayyubid dynasty would prove to be unfortunate. The Mamluk eventually devastated what remained of the Christian Holy Land and any Crusader states. More violent than any of their predecessors, the Mamluk would ensure the end of any gain made by Christians in the Holy Land Crusades. 
Whatever the arrangement between the Mamluk and the Ayyubid earlier to fight the Crusaders, the Mamluk structure to take over and negotiate shows that they were well organized and prepared for such an endeavor well before assassinating Turin Shah. I look forward to talking to you next time when we explore the rise of the Mamluk a little further and take a look at the last few Holy Land Crusades. Talk to you next time.